This is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. When did this happen? Who voted on it? Did the mayor just decide this? What? So that's why I called RTV6 to find out maybe you can get some answers that we couldn't. New at 11, RTV6 Doves has answers tonight for people living in Martinsville who opened up their water bills and couldn't believe they're now paying, in some cases, double what they paid last month. Working for you, RTV6's Cornelius Hawker shows you the lesson everyone can learn from this issue when it comes to holding leaders accountable for changes that impact your life. <laughs> Water down the drain is now more expensive in Martinsville. It is difficult because you're on a fixed income. So, you know, you budget everything out for very, you know, for every month what you're going to pay for this or that. Now retired, Sharon Halverson doesn't have much room for surprise increases in bills. When I saw the new bill and I saw what our water consumption was and I saw what the new bill was, I was like, something's not right here. In the span of a month, her water bill doubled from $45 to $90. The main culprit, the wastewater charge. $20 last month, $50 this month. The neighbors that we've talked to, nobody knows about it. Over the course of six days, I tried, but no one with the city would go on camera, but I was able to talk to the mayor's office over the phone, and they said the sewer rate increase shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, because over the summer, the city released these public notices, laying out the increases, and inviting the public to give their comment to the Board of Public Works. The Reporter Times published the notices and did stories about the proposed price increases. Managing editor Stephen Crane even wrote a commentary where he laid it out plainly. The city, he says, needs to do a better job of informing the public about rate hikes, realizing not everyone reads the newspaper. And the public, he says, should get more involved by showing up to public meetings and giving your opinion to elected officials. Sharon tells me she's never going to be caught off guard like this again. And the next time the city wants to increase the water bill or any other bill for that matter, she hopes they do this. The correct and right thing would be to stick, type up a little note, put it in your water bill. Working for you in Martinsville, Cornelius Hawker, RTV6. An Indiana law allows cities like Martinsville to increase wastewater rates, but cities have to go through the state regulatory commission to increase water usage rates. Martinsville wants to increase the price for water usage, so if you want to say in the issue, get in touch with city leaders. If you have a problem and feel like your concerns are being ignored, contact us at working for you at rtv6.com. A Lawrence Township official is out of a job after confronting two men for no reason. Those men say that punishment is not enough. I got my right to do anything I want to do. I'm a police officer. Well, this happened outside the Nordstrom Rack on 82nd Street. Aaron Blackwell says a man later identified as a deputy constable watched Blackwell and his cousin check out in the store, then followed the two to their car. The video shows the deputy constable demanding to see his driver's license, threatening to tow his car, and yelling at the two men. Are you really an officer of the law? Yep. We don't have any proof that you are. Well, that's because you bad. have a shirt that Get says your driver's no. license out. What is your proof that you're you're even legal to pull it? Shut up. Us? What is Why your don't proof? you shut up? What I'm not talking proof? to you. What? Does it make you feel any better to No, know? no, it doesn't. That he got fired. Nobody from Lawrence called me, apologized, or anything. Nobody. Nobody. So and, until you do that, it ain't heartfelt to me and it ain't it ain't real. It's just some guy losing his job. A few minutes later, an IMPD officer responded, talked to the men, and told them that they were free to go. Working for you, we showed this video to James White, a retired Indiana State Police Lieutenant and former Deputy Director of the Indiana Law Enforcement Academy. He says the constable did everything wrong. My first reaction to the video was, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, this was just, this is uncalled for. Uh, particularly in this day and age, where we have so much strife between the citizens that we police. Um, many times police actions are misconstrued by the citizens, but in this case, 
the citizens are absolutely right. This was a bad stop. White also says you're not required to show your ID if a law enforcement officer has no reasonable suspicion or probable cause. The now former deputy constable in this case worked for the constable of Lawrence Township. A constable is a law enforcement officer that serves legal papers for small claims court, acts as bailiffs, and enforces court orders. Now to the forecast. Temperatures are still colder than normal, but we made it above freezing today. Storm Team 6 Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory joins us now with the forecast. Hey, Kevin. That's a step in the right direction, isn't it? Getting temperatures above freezing really all the way to 40 in Indianapolis. Bloomington at 43. There's more of that. The milder air will continue to move into the state tomorrow and this weekend. Temperatures right now have backed off. We're at 29, and if you look at the satellite, your state divided here from just about Bloomington, Indy, Muncie, Northwest. The cloud cover holding temperatures fairly steady will wake up to the lower 20s tomorrow. It will feel like the teens will still battle the clouds, a mixture of clouds and sunshine in the morning. Here are your afternoon highs back in the upper 30s. We'll talk about when we'll be closer to 50 coming up. Working for you, RTV6 is getting answers for people in different communities concerned about safety issues. I know that you guys have gotten answers in the past and pretty quick at that. So I decided to reach out to you guys and here we are. We start at Bradford Lake Apartments on the south side of Indianapolis. People who live there say drivers often speed through the complex to avoid a busy intersection nearby, East Stop 11 and Madison Avenue. Joshua Newbold is concerned someone is going to get hurt, specifically a child. My main concern is for the children, obviously, because a lot of the kids ride their bikes in the streets, play with basketballs in the street. You know, God forbid a kid gets hit. Property managers tell RTV6 they plan on fixing a broken speed bump in the complex and updating this paint so speed bumps are more visible. We will continue to follow up until the changes are made. My concern is this, the lights are out and it's dark and need to be fixed. So mm -hmm. then I called you. Yeah. <laughs> Now to Noblesville, where some people are in the dark. Lee Abernathy says she's counted around 50 street lights that are not working along 146th Street just east of State Road 37. She's also worried about kids possibly getting hurt. I don't know if school children are waiting for buses out there, but it seems like if there are lights there, they ought to be working because it was clearly very hard to see the other night. Our TV6 found out the city knows about the problem and that replacing street lights is identified as one of the Noblesville now capital improvement projects for the near future. Impeachment investigation hearings into President Trump continue tomorrow. The former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine will testify publicly. Marie Ivanovich, a career diplomat, was abruptly pulled from Ukraine last spring. She left her post in May, two months before the critical phone call between President Trump and Ukraine's president. A high school in Southern California is closed until further notice after a deadly shooting today. At least two students were killed by a classmate at Saugus High School in Santa Clarita. Detectives reviewed the video at the scene. They say it clearly shows the suspect take out a handgun from his backpack, shoot five people, and then shoot himself in the head. We heard the gunshots and we just were like, let's go, like, let's run. Just seeing backpacks thrown all over the place and not knowing where your friends are. The 16-year-old shooter survived but is in critical condition. His motive is not clear. There are now four confirmed deaths in Indiana related to vaping. The state health department says the latest victim was between the ages of 50 and 59. They died from severe lung injuries caused by e-cigarette use. Right now, there are 55 confirmed cases of vaping-related lung illnesses and 57 probable cases in Indiana. New at 11, the Indianapolis Public Library now includes a section dedicated to history culture, and stories from the LGBTQ plus community. Leaders unveiled the new permanent exhibit this evening at the Central Library in downtown Indianapolis. Right now, the collection includes more than 6,000 items. The CEO of the Indianapolis Public Library wants that number to grow. Indy Pride has helped make this material available, and we have pledged to continue to grow this collection in the future. I don't want anyone to think that, you know, this is one and done, that now we've got our gay collection. It's not that at all. I really see this as a starting point. Last year, Indy Pride and the Indy Library announced a partnership to integrate the Chris Gonzalez Library and Archives into the Central Library. Chris Gonzalez, by the way, was a community activist and founder of Indiana Youth Group. He died in 1994. Oh.
New at 11 tonight, the Salvation Army celebrated a big kickoff with music, and soon you'll hear the sound of bells. It is now red kettle season. Tomorrow, you'll start seeing angel trees at Central Indiana Malls. A record 7,000 kids are signed up for the program this year. What we do is we sign up these kids, we find out from the parents what their wants and their needs are, and then we print them out on these special little tags. And then the public, people like you and me, we can go out there and we can choose an angel and adopt for them, adopt them and, and go out and shop, buy a bicycle or perhaps a pair of tennis shoes, or maybe they need something like diapers if they're really tiny. For more information about the program, go to SalvationArmyIndiana.org slash Angel Tree. You can also help make it a happy holidays for families in need by donating to our Six Shines on Toy Drive. It kicks off tomorrow at the Christmas Nights of Lights display at the State Fairgrounds. Part of the proceeds from this event will go to the Toy Drive. You can also bring a toy and get a discount on an Indy Fuel ticket. If you have children who need winter coats, a community organization wants to help where kids can get what they need to stay warm for free this weekend. Also ahead, how a Central Indiana high school is helping students learn skills for in-demand, high-paying jobs that do not require a four-year degree. You're watching RTV6 News at 11. Visit your local Hyundai dealer today. This is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. The record-breaking freezing temperatures we felt earlier this week are a good reminder that not everyone has what they need to stay warm this winter. Tonight, RTV6's Cameron Riddle introduces you to a group that's working hard to make sure kids on the east side have a coat by this weekend to get them ready for winter. If this week proved anything, it's that in Indiana, you need a coat. And while it may be a necessity, for many of us, the warmth of a coat is a luxury. As you know, we live in Indianapolis and the weather can be below zero one day and it can be 55 the next. Um, but you definitely, everyone has to have a coat. Nicole Glass and the members of grassroots organization Creating a New Society are working to make a difference with a coat drive this weekend. Their plan is to give away 500 coats to Indianapolis children, a free gesture they hope will protect those kids from winter's brutal cold. Just walked a couple of feet to the car and my face almost froze off. So I can't imagine any children or even parents that aren't even able to provide that. Ralphie L. Dorsey founded the organization and came up with the idea for a coat drive five years ago after seeing a problem firsthand. It was cold outside. I was going to a local grocery store uh, at Tiffin Linwood, the Kroger's. Uh, I seen a few young guys out there um, trying to get some cash. Um, seen it was cold outside, they didn't have any jackets on, so I came up with the idea to go buy them some jackets. From there, the coat drive took off. Now the goal is to serve the community every year, a process that takes months of planning and is done with little to no money. We don't receive any grants, any sponsorships, no big name companies are backing us or anything like that. Um, that's just pretty much like what we go off of out of our own pocket. We're just small grassroots organization, just trying to give back, trying to help. Working for you on the east side, Cameron Riddle, RTV6. And the coat drive is this Saturday at the John Bonner Center near East 10th and Rural. Doors open at 8 a.m. and will stay open while supplies last. The organization is still accepting coat donations as well. Two mornings in a row, as you know, with single-digit record-setting temperatures, we've turned the corner a little bit by making it to the freezing mark today. That said, you'll wake up with temperatures around 20 in the morning. We'll tiptoe into the weekend with a slow warming trend. Our temperatures will peak early next week. The core of the cold air will be pushed out of the United States, and we'll see milder air west of the Mississippi first start to drift to the north. Our temperatures, as I mentioned, early next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, start to make some progress into the upper 40s. Generally, it is a dry seven-day forecast. I'll show you an opportunity or two for some rain. 34 tomorrow at noon. The wind will generally be northwest at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Afternoon temperatures work their way into the upper 30s once again. By the time we get to noon, temperatures should be around 32 or 33. 40 in Bloomington. Columbus at 40 should be lower 40s in the southern portion of the state. Friday night football, fewer 
tour games of more importance, and they're trying to make their way to Lucas Oil Stadium so they can play indoors. Temperatures will be in the 20s as uh, we have kickoff, and the wind will be light. As we go into the weekend, the difference between Saturday and Sunday, you see they're both the same high temperature, more clouds on Sunday, the slight chance of a shower, especially in the northwest portion of the state. Notre Dame at home, 230 kickoff, 33 degrees and mostly cloudy. Ball State, 37 for a 330 kickoff. Saturday temperature, noon at 34. Afternoon high, 41 degrees. Saturday temperatures cooler to the north, a little warmer to the south. No real surprise there. Have a decent amount of sunshine everywhere. As you look at the seven-day forecast, we mentioned the warmth is all on the right-hand side of your screen. Overnight lows will come up above the freezing mark. Afternoon high temperatures so close to 50 degrees with the return of some warmer air will at least have a chance for some rain on Thursday. Dave is ready with sports. And let's uh, talk a little bit about Sunday. Vinatieri, he remains the Colts kicker. A lot of talk about Adam after the team brought in some tryouts on Tuesday, but gave him the vote of confidence yesterday and back to normal, kind of, today. Good evening. And that routine includes a chat with the media on Thursday, the 46-year-old as resolute as ever for the Colts. We're in the middle of a season. We're trying to win games and trying to do good things. So uh, my commitment to this team is as high as it's ever been. Uh, I'm going to try to do, continue to do the, the best that I can to help our team win. No, I, I, that's, that's, those are things and talks for after seasons are over when you're, when, when you're thinking that stuff, not in the middle of a season. Uh, retirement? Not right now. A huge night of high school football tomorrow night. Regional titles on the line. Hope you were with us at 6 tonight. Our Sports Extra Spotlight on Mount Vernon. Going for their first regional championship tomorrow night. It's up now on my Twitter and Facebook page. College Hoop tonight. Marion hosting Thomas Moore. Scott Hetty, the former Carmel coach, now in his third season. Christian Harvey got it going for the Knights. He had 17. Tyree Johnson, game high 22. This thing went to overtime. Thomas Moore pulling it out. 78-76. Marion's first loss of the season. And what's up with the lack of buzz for the Pacers? I mean, this team's won seven of the last eight and went Winning with that, Oladipo, Miles Turner, and Jeremy Lamb. Back to practice, so today they've got an incredibly difficult back-to-back -to -back tomorrow and Saturday at Houston tomorrow, host the Bucks Saturday night. You know, James Harden is, you know, averaging 37, 38 points. You know, he's playing great basketball uh, once again. Uh, you know, now they have Westbrook on that roster, and, uh, you know, they are a team that can put up some points. Finally tonight, first and foremost for the Rockets. Just last night, they hosted the Clippers where head coach Doc Rivers was looking for some technicals here. Watch the right side of the screen. That was his son, Austin Rivers, who plays for the other team, Houston, encouraging the officials to tee up his dad, and they did it. Ejected from the game, and Austin finishes by motioning to his dad, call me. Call me Dan. Wow. As he left the court. Rockets won the game 102-93. What kind of respect is that Ooh, for your That's going to be awkward Thanksgiving on. table conversation. I was going to say you got Thanksgiving in two <laughs> weeks. Come on. All right. Tension <laughs> for sure. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Dave, for that. Coming up, should you include references on your resume? Why are hiring, hiring Hoosier's career coach says no, plus other helpful tips for your next job search. Hoosiers is dedicated to connecting you to job opportunities, resources, and training no matter your age. Martinsville High School is providing career paths for students looking for high-paying jobs without necessarily needing a four-year degree. Tonight, the school hosted an open house to highlight its skilled trades and technical career paths programs. Several different businesses were there as well, supporting those who could be their next employees. For parents, there's a sense of relief because students have so many options when it comes to their futures. It's programs like this where a lot of students do their best work. They get to use their creativity, their strengths, their imagination, be able to produce something from their mind instead of having to follow something necessarily step by step. An advisory board helps shape the program and includes educators, business owners, and community leaders. Now to a program helping older Hoosiers sharpen their skills and learn some new ones. Over the last several years, more than a thousand Hoosiers have taken advantage of Goodwill's Senior Community Service Employment Program, the CSEP program. Program 
zeroes in on people 55 and older, assessing their skills and filling in the gaps with new workplace skills and honing their strengths so they can re-enter the labor market. There's even paid on-the-job training. 67-year-old Mary Jones went through the program and now works as an administrative assistant at the Goodwill offices. Basically, what I was looking for was training to get me back in the swing of working. I've always been in administration, um, and that's exactly what it did. It gave me the confidence to, that I was to go back to work. It boned me up on um, my computer skills. Uh, which went lacking for a long time. Goodwill sits down with employers to listen to their employment needs and then provides that specialized training to the participants in the CSEP program. Most employers want a resume to see your job history and your skills, but should you also include a list of references? Our Hiring Hoosiers career coach answers that question and more. Should you include a list of references on your resume? Actually, no, this is not necessary. Why not? Use the space on the page to highlight you. List your skills and accomplishments. And don't waste important resume space by stating that references are available. This is generally assumed. If you'd like, you can create a separate list of references to have on hand. So if the hiring manager asks you, you'll have it. So who should you ask for a recommendation? Ask your past managers, supervisors, and former work employees. They will be able to talk about your work skills and talents. What if you have little or no work experience? No problem. Your teachers, coaches, pastors, and counselors will be happy to give you a great recommendation. Include managers of any organizations where you are a member or have volunteered. Once you've made your list, choose three or four people who you think would give you the best reference. Be sure to place the name of each person, their title, organization, phone number and email address. Start your list with the most impressive or important reference. Next, it's always best to contact the person to ask them to be your reference. This can be done in person, by phone or email. This is a good time to have a personal conversation. Let them know the types of positions you're seeking and the skills needed for that job. You need to ask ahead so your reference will have some time to prepare. This will remind them of all your good qualities, skills, and abilities. For more information about any of the career-related stories we shared tonight, go to HiringHoosiers.com. Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries. Live life comfortably. Another sign of the holiday is the Festival of Trees returns to the Indiana Historical Society tomorrow. Tonight we're getting a sneak peek at the exhibit. The display features 92 trees decorated by businesses and organizations across central Indiana. That's 12 more than last year. Some companies starting planting their trees right after last year's festival. I'm a big fan of the tree by Southside Harley-Davidson, and I met with them a couple weeks ago, and they were telling me all about the tree, how they started planting it just after last year's Festival of Trees closed, and what they had in mind, and it's pretty incredible. I can't wait for people to see it. It's not at all what you're going to expect. One of the trees includes a live owl. What? Who what? thought of that? <laughs> <laughs> you can see it in all the trees through January 4th at the Indian Histor History Center. You think he stays on the tree he's supposed to or he visits all the others? I'm sure he hops around, yeah. I like that. 92 trees, there's 92 counties in Indiana. Oh, well. fun fact. And I hope to be 92 someday. You know the beauty of an owl, right? Always keeps his head on a swivel. <laughs> <laughs> Temperatures moving up. 43 by my. I, I, I may have gotten Gregory speechless there for like two <laughs> Again? seconds. Again? Did Good you night. see my head? Amazing. Just <laughs>